Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Moose 5 Ton. And today we're going to be showing you how to swap out the entire spring brake chamber. So I tried to replace a diaphragm and there was actually an issue with the chamber itself. So I'm going to be showing you how to swap out the chamber. And I'll go into a lot more detail, so let's get to it. All right guys, so here we are underneath the truck. And I'm making this video after everything is complete. Um, reason being is I had a buddy of mine help me do this because this was a bit above my expertise. So, uh, commercial truck guy, he works on commercial trucks, helped me replace the entire canister. So obviously it's pretty straightforward. You can tell what's brand new. Um, it did not come like this. I painted it. I painted it with Herculiner bed liner. Um, again, not an endorsement for them at all. I just, I like their product. And being under the truck here, I figured that would work really well. So, went out of my way when it showed up and uh, painted the bracket separately. This was all together. Um, it showed up caged and I just taped off the threads and I taped off the side of the um, chamber that goes with the diaphragm into the service side. Obviously, right, because you got your service and then your spring. So, got all that taped up and then I just hit it again. I put the, obviously the little plug in there and I just quickly hit it again just now so it's actually still tacky. But, um, there's a bunch of controversy out there whether or not to replace your diaphragms on the spring side if you have air leaking out of these holes or just to replace the entire chamber. Um, it is way safer to replace just the chamber itself because to replace the diaphragm you have to cage the spring side pull just this housing off and if either the caging bolt breaks or the spring inside is broken for whatever reason when you take this off um, it has the potential to kill you so it's definitely something to be concerned about there's a very good video out there from Nelson Studios um, I don't I don't think he can emphasize it anymore and he's hundred percent true and correct that you know he pretty much does go and explain how it's done and take his own risk but unless you know what you're doing and you're gonna accept 100% of the risk you shouldn't do it right um, right now this entire thing ordered for me was two hundred and forty three dollars I think with tax so um, you know the diaphragms are seven bucks a piece of course the diaphragms are cheaper but you know you gotta come to a point where you know what's worth it um, I mean if you know what you're doing and and your chambers are in good shape like to be honest with you right now if I had a if I had a problem with the diaphragm in this brand new chamber I'd probably cage it and fix the diaphragm because it's brand new but if you're working on something that's 30 years old you know you gotta you gotta think about it so you know you go the way you want to go um, but obviously I'm not gonna advise that you change your your diaphragms unless you know what you're doing and even then I'd be really careful um, so to change out the entire chamber it's obviously a lot easier on the old one we caged it and I'll show you that in the next portion we'll go to the old one that came off the truck it's sitting out in the yard just in case anything goes wrong so we caged it and then you don't touch anything on this clamp here you come to this clamp over here and this clamp uh, the bolt was over here on the military one obviously it's down here now with the new one but you loosen that clamp up and then this and you take the airlines off uh, this one only has two holes for the airlines obviously it's spring and service um, I didn't point them in any order it's just that's what's up there spring and service um, obviously you can see that there so take your airlines off and then you take the clamp off and the entire thing just falls off so make sure you hold it the entire thing will come off and there's a smaller diaphragm in here um, that I recommend replacing too. I don't have the part numbers for the diaphragm. I will put that in the description. But I have the part numbers listed here. I'll read them to you for the clamp and for the entire chamber. Um, so yeah, it just falls off. And then obviously the new one you just set on. And it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So for the chamber itself, your military part number is A-Alpha 32. 80 e echo 6817 and your national stock number for that is 25300134 
3417. And then for the clamp, the military part number is 2797 Victor 100. And the national stock number is 5340-00-015-7560. And I'll put all them in the description as well. So that is fail safe, fail safe spring brake chamber clamp and piggyback spring brake chamber. So again, this was a brand new part, and this was, I don't know if it's a, it's a, new, it's a new clamp, it wasn't used in any way, but it came red and obviously I painted it. But, um, and it came with a bolt too, which is a, uh, it is a great bolt because it has the markings on it. So, um, you can also buy, um, I don't know if you want to call them remanufactured, rebuilt, the military ones, and you can buy the entire thing. If you really need to or want to um, I didn't one find it necessary and two uh, I preferred to go this route because this is the problem I was having so when I took my old one apart to do the diaphragm um, it actually so the air dryer system on my truck was bad previously when I bought the truck and there was a lot of water in the system so um, it had corroded the inside lip behind this clamp and we took it off um, it was actually corroded and there were actually pieces of the metal lip missing um, not from us we didn't break anything off somebody else must have been in there the military could have been in there when the truck was refurbished in 2010 we don't know but um, it was leaking before we put a brand new diaphragm in there and it leaked even worse so we just decided to go the route and replace the whole chamber and now it's it's 100% nothing it's 100% sealed up so um, that's that. It's again, it's pretty straightforward. If you buy the whole thing, like I said, it comes caged, it comes clamped. Um, you literally just take off the old military clamp. Again, I bought a new clamp, so set the chamber up there, clamp it down, make sure you get the diaphragm seated properly. I used the brand new diaphragm. Airlines disconnect, airlines attached. Um, like in my other videos, I always state. Permatex liquid thread sealant, again, not an endorsement for Permatex in any way, but um, something I love and a product I love, so, you know, Permatex white thread sealant on both ends, and, uh, yeah, that's it. You, once you get it all on there and 100% secure, you'll uncage it, the caging bolt gets stored, and this one, it's in the back side, um, you can see it back there, and then you just pop in that rubber, um, rubber flange. So let's jump over to the military one and I'll explain that one real quick and then that'll be it. All right, here we are over at the one that came off the truck and I am really not even gonna mess with this much because again, this is 30 years old and essentially it's a ticking time bomb sitting here. So I'm not going to mess with it too much. There's already some telltale signs. This one does not cage fully. So it is caged and this thing does not pull in fully. It's weird. When you get the brand new one, this piston will be pushed all the way up against the housing. It'll be flush. That's fully caged. So um, again, I didn't take this off. So either my buddy didn't cage it all the way, but he, he did mention it too, that it, it was pretty tight and it's not caging all the way. So again, you don't want to over tighten them if you're going to cage them because then you can you can break the spring inside doing that as well um, obviously this is on here fully so I can't really show you where the metal was missing but it was on this it was on the actually it was on the lip I'm pretty sure it was on the lip of this side so it was up in here up inside the spring thing it was just metal missing and you can obviously tell I mean look how corroded this is it's just wiping off so um, you can actually see down inside I don't know if the camera will get it, but that's all corroded in there too, and that's actually part of the. Like, you see, you just see this flaking off. Like this is ridiculous. So um, you can see obviously where it's all corroded. I'm not gonna point it at myself. You can see where it's all corroded along the edge, and there. So that's that nature. Um, if you're wondering, the caging bolt's still in this one because we used the caging bolt from another from another chamber. We just took one out and cleaned it up and then we just used that one when we were planning to just do the diaphragm we just used the one but after we found out that they're corroded 
we just stopped. So right now, um, all three others need to be replaced. They're all leaking as well. They're very minor. This one was the worst. This one started to leak really bad. So the other three need to be replaced as well. But um, they're minor leaks and the truck can still be used and driven. Um, but I'll get to them and get them replaced as well. But we're going to just do the entire chamber. So that's this is the safer way to do it. This is, in a sense, a more beneficial way to do it. Because, again, these trucks are very old. My truck's anywhere from 1984, 1986. It was rebuilt in 2010 but again they didn't do everything so if you get parts like this that are severely corroded or worn out just replace it because again the safety risk especially with something like this with this spring in here it's just not worth it so don't be taking it apart don't be putting yourself in that kind of risk um, there's also options out there that some shops will try and sell you on to rebuild this like they'll sell you this section of it and you can rebuild it and then you reuse this side of it and just no again no you're getting into messing with the springs you got to take this out then absolutely not don't even bother these parts aren't super expensive again yeah they're not cheap but i mean in, in, a, in a way it's a commercial truck and 240 some dollars for a brake canister really isn't all that bad at the end of the day so um be careful if you decide to do this and you're gonna have this one don't just throw this in the trash either you have to be very careful make sure you dispose of this properly it's probably what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take this down to a, a shop a buddy shop of mine and have him weld all this together so we're gonna weld pretty much the bolt the nut and everything to the chamber and then I'm gonna hand it into a scrap company and then they can dispose of it how they want but it, again I'm gonna take it myself it's gonna be very careful because you know these things can explode I mean right now it's safer than if it was caged and you were trying to replace this diaphragm because if this was a part you can run the risk of both the, the bolt shearing off and coming out and the spring letting go and coming out right now if it lets go if the spring is broken this will move but probably won't come all the way out if I'm wrong someone can correct me in the comments but I'm 90% sure that this will not come all the way out if this spring is just broken if the actual rod is broken okay that'll shoot out as well but if the spring inside is just broken it'll it'll move forward more but it won't come all the way out the the, the threaded part of the rod will shoot out like a bullet so again that's pointed way down my yard right now um, away from everything so if that took off so be it um, but the, the the spring itself inside the chamber won't come rocketing out when you're doing the spring side diaphragms you take this clamp off so you literally have the bolt holding the entire spring in there and if that lets go there goes the bolt and there goes the spring and whatever those two things hit are going to do a lot of damage if they hit somebody they could potentially be killed so again be very careful if you have any questions feel free to ask um, if any of you are curious why there's three of these here uh, I don't know hundred percent if I had to kind of make an educated guess it was to add airlines so if they wanted to go full air or extra air um, for whatever reason but obviously if you have your spring uh, let's see if this one actually says I can point to service and then spring side it should be. Uh, it looks like the arrow. Here, I'm trying to read the arrow again, not fuck with this thing too much. It looks like it's pointing to service, and then this would be spring. So again, service spring or so oh, just read your airlines, follow. Um, if you want to print off the TM, or again, an easy way to do it is just get colored zip ties and color code the zip ties and how they come off they go right back on the one I bought the brand new one I just put on does not have the third hole and you don't have to worry about getting a new plug or anything it just has the two holes so it's probably a Haldex or Bendex part um, commercial replacement they make it so it fits these trucks and it just has the two needed airlines it does not have this third plugged up one so you don't have to worry about that um, 
I think that's it. If you notice, the bolts on this are not the ones that came off. These are stainless steel grade bolts. We put these on once we took this off. I was thinking when I was just going to do the diaphragm, I put stainless steel bolts back on it so they wouldn't be rusted and they're nylon threaded. Um, but again, we had a problem with the chamber itself, so we replaced the entire thing. Uh, again, if you can afford to replace the entire thing, and if there's anything wrong with your existing chamber, just save yourself the headache and replace the entire thing. I mean, I got lucky that mine came apart okay and we had no issues, but God forbid if somebody would have got hurt or we had an issue and we got the diaphragm in there anyway and it starts leaking still, like, you're just in the same position. And I'll be honest with you, when we did the the diaphragm it's probably three hours two hours you know you want to do it right you want to do it slow you want to make sure you know you're not screwing with it in any way we had to, we tried to clean up a little bit of the corrosion without screwing with it too much and then all that and it's still pissing air it was pissing worse than the first time we had it all like before we even took it apart so and we knew the metal was missing so we just i didn't care i mean it wasn't leaking so bad that the brake was applying um, but it was it was definitely coming out of there pretty significantly so and I mean today we did the the entire chamber replacement maybe an hour and that was because we were talking a bit like it's literally take that one clamp off take the old one away go put this where it can explode and not hurt anything and uh, put the new one on so it's pretty it's pretty straightforward but if you have any questions, let me know, and uh, I'd be happy to help. Um, we'll be doing the other three, so if I think I forgot anything or realized I forgot anything or find anything else, I'll definitely make a new video as well. But this is pretty much exactly straightforward how to change your entire service or your entire spring break canister or chamber, as they call them. So, hope it helps. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, feel free to ask any questions, any comments. More than welcome. Hope you guys start enjoying these videos. And, um, yeah, if you have a serious question or anything, go to our Facebook page. It's Iron Moose 5 Ton on Facebook. We'll be a lot quicker getting back to you than the YouTube channel. I check it, but, you know, Facebook, we get the notifications and stuff, so I get right back to you on my phone. I check the YouTube channel on my computer. So, thanks, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.